Hey, everybody. It's TPH Live. I'm Dan Harris. It's your daily sanity break. We do five minutes of meditation designed for absolute beginners or seasoned pros. And we also hope to create a sense of community at a time when a lot of us feel kind of cut off. So let's dive right in. Uh, our teacher du jour is uh, Jeff Warren, founder of the Consciousness Explorers Club in Toronto, Canada, co-author with me of Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics, all around awesome guy. Uh, hi, Jeff. Hey, Dan. Good um, to see you, bud. Always good to see you. Always good to see you. Um, so you you wanted you had you you identified a really cool subject for the day, which is subtle pleasures. What do you mean by that? Yeah, subtle pleasures or simple pleasures. Um, I think I guess maybe the way to frame it is when I first started meditating, I had this idea that I was going to sort of break, pierce through some membrane and be wandering around in these higher states of consciousness and states of perfect equanimity and bliss. And needless to say, that didn't really happen. You know, I had some good times uh, when I sat, but I kept coming back to this world. Um, and I guess what I started to figure out after a while was that it was more, it wasn't about experiencing new states of consciousness so much as it was about experiencing what was always here, but just doing it in a new way or having a new appreciation for it. And it became much more about, um, kind of getting smarter about how I deploy my attention, not just when I am sitting, but from day to day, from moment to moment and what that actually looks like. And, um, what it used to look like for me was just kind of running full speed into the next peak experience. It was just like, I wanted all the special effects. That's what, I think that's what being young is sort of like. Uh, but it was always, if it wasn't dramatic, then I, that I was interested in the drama. And what I was overlooking was all of these more subtler or simpler pleasures that were always there that in a sense are free, uh, but that I was overriding them and I was just kind of running roughshod right over them looking for the next big peak experience. And so meditation for me has been a lot about learning how to slow down and notice what's here and then notice that actually we're continually being um, – uh, presented with these little wells of nourishment, little subtle, pleasurable experiences from, you know, just now before I did this, I went outside and even though it's cold here, just looking at, you know, watching a tree. It's so simple. And ordinarily in the past, I'd be like, oh yeah, that's a cool tree. And then I'd just keep going. Or I'd be like, oh, that sun feels good in my face, but then I'd just keep going. You know, the practice sort of teaches you to go, actually, wait a second. Why don't I just stop and taste that for even just like three seconds? which turn into five seconds, which turn, can turn into 30 seconds. And that, and that it's not so much about changing my state of consciousness as it is about relocating where I pay attention to and beginning to, to honor or to respect those subtle things and those subtle pleasures that, we're, that, are, that are all around us. And the more we do that, the more we kind of take a moment to sink into those things, the more the, 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 the real estate of our consciousness gets sort of colonize. I mean, it sort of starts out with these like little islands of pleasurable things and it becomes kind of an archipelago and then it becomes this sort of like beach you can live on. And, it, and it's just really about being smarter about how you pay attention. So that was my, my shtick for today. I love that shtick. I love it. And it's it basically, you know, one of my principal adversaries in the world is cliche. And there is a cliche, stop no and smell the roses. And you can say that and it's easy to ignore it. But what you just did in the preceding paragraphs was to put enough meat on the bone for this ancient cliche that makes it really compelling and actionable. And you and I don't know if this is also sort of in line with what you're going at. But one of the things you do when you're guiding meditation that I just I've told you this a million times, but I really love it is you direct us to what you call the sort of creaturely pleasure of just being an animal that is sitting there and breathing. And so it's like taking the staring at a tree or the feeling the sun on your face when you're out, like living your life off the cushion and then bringing the subtle pleasures into the actual sitting meditation as well. Exactly. Cause I mean, and it's true, like it is a cliche and it, and it, in a sense, like just changing your attention, the way you pay attention one time, it's sort of trivial. Like you'll spend, five more seconds paying attention to this good thing instead of paying attention to your worry. And, you know, and you'll feel a little bit better. You'll shift your state a bit, but then you kind of go back to your thing. But 
if you do it again and you do it again and you do it again, and that's the training, it doesn't add up to being trivial at all. It adds up to being very substantive. And, and in the neuroscience literature, they would talk about being deliberate about kind of reversing the brain's negativity bias, that we have this bias towards only paying attention to stuff that's challenging. I mean, for good survival reasons, we want to work out these problems, but we're like overcompensated in that regard. So we're, we're continually spinning out about our problems instead of like taking, instead of being as deliberate about not doing that, about saying, actually, instead of paying attention to this, to the problem track of my brain, what if I just pay attention to the pleasure track of my body, which actually is, go, is just, it's just a, it's a quieter track, but it's sending all these signals. Mm. They're right there. And so it's, can you just stop and tune into that? I think it is the body. It is the senses that offer a lot of this stuff. All right. Well, uh, let's do a little meditation, shall we? We shall. And uh, let me just remind people to ask Jess, our brilliant producer, just sent me a, a, a message in chat because she knows I would have forgotten to say this otherwise. So Jess, shout out to Jess, everybody. Uh, we want your questions on the back end of this meditation. And if you can, try to make them questions about uh, Jeff's uh, shtick today. And shtick is probably not the right word to use because that trivializes it. Jeff's <laughs> ideas today about uh, uh, about um, subtle pleasures, tuning into these subtle pl this stream of subtle pleasures that's always there but often overlooked. Okay, now I'm going to shut up and mute myself. Go for it, Jeff. Okay. All right, so meditation, we think of as this opportunity, this, this sort of two, three, four, five, six minutes here to tune into that uh, subtle pleasure soundtrack that may be there in the background. So you can start out by taking a few um, deep breaths. You know, I like to do this just to kind of get myself organized. So breathing in. Stretching up the spine a bit. And then the out breath. Right away in the out breath, actually, you might notice there's a subtle or a simple pleasure there of this pleasure of relaxing a little bit, of letting go. As we, when we breathe out, it's the diaphragm relaxes, so the muscle kind of lets go. So stretching up and again, and there's even a pleasure in the stretching up. It's sort of like, yeah, I'm gonna like show up for this meditation. I'm gonna like be here. There's a kind of a, a dignity in taking the seat and taking this time. So you breathe in, you stretch up, and then there's the out breath, which is the downward motion. And you can kind of nice long out breath, and as you do that, you can soften your forehead a little bit, the worry lines, and soften the cheeks and the jaw, maybe the shoulders. And let's just notice here, all right, what very, very simple, very, very um, low-frequency pleasures might there be in, in my experience right now or in your experience? And, and I'm not talking about pleasure like, you know, high bandwidth pleasure, more like some subtle sense of satisfaction or subtle enjoyment. Maybe it's the feeling of just that settling when you breathe out. Maybe it's that feeling of, oh, yeah, I get to be a truant now, a truant from your, quote, responsibilities, just this idea of taking a break. There's something sort of satisfying about that. Something nice about being in a body. Kind of shifting a little bit, feeling your, as Dan said, your creatureliness. Maybe there's a, some sound in your environment that's actually not offensive. You know, it's bird sound or even a mechanical sound that's kind of got a nice buzz to it or a, a resonating to it, a rhythm to it. Maybe it's nice to look at the back of your eyes Kind of get that swirly, trippy lava lamp thing going on. The darkness and brightness behind the eyes. The idea is to just choose one of these now, just for the last few minutes, and just sort of kind of sink into it a bit. 
deliberately choosing to pay attention to this thing and not not our worries for the moment. We can let those be in the background. Our theme is subtle pleasures or simple pleasures. And there's a simple pleasure in just sitting. Just being, enjoying your company, enjoying the company of all the people on this call. Remembering you're allowed to do this. Checking out is sometimes checking in. The soft breath there, which sometimes starts to slow down naturally. The, cre the creaturely body starting to slow down too. The metabolism kind of relaxing. Sort of like reality is coming to you now. You just sit and chill, and it's kind of coming up and through you. Sounds rising and falling, the breath rising and falling. There's nothing you need to do, it'll come to you. And then there's that satisfaction of. Kind of realizing that, oh man, I can just rest here. And I'll even suggest here at the end that you can open your eyes. So we'll keep the meditation going though here for a minute. So as you kind of open your eyes, seeing if you can stay in contact a little bit with that rest and just notice in your surroundings, there's there something kind of, you know, nice to look at. Maybe it's the, there's a tree outside the window or play of light and shadow on one of the walls. You know, as a, if you're in Dan's room, there might be candles and, you know, spiritual tapestries. Oh, wait a second. That kind of thing. Anyway, so <laughs> that's the encouragement. That's our meditation. I, my eyes fell in terms of looking at something pleasurable at this picture of me and my <laughs> wife holding a dog at a, at a, the, the one charity benefit we go to every year when they had charity benefits is for the ASPCA. So we didn't get to keep the dog, but um, uh, I have managed to keep the wife. Um, so let's do some questions. By the way, great meditation. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, sure. Gail uh, writes in, how can folks whose lives are not easy use this concept of noticing the subtle pleasure? Um, well, I mean, it's important. Or it's super important. Um, I would say there's... You know, there's always going to be challenges in our lives, and sometimes those challenges are going to be really intense, and they will overwhelm us, and it'll be hard to do a practice like this. Uh, it'll be hard to sit. It'll be hard to find pleasure in the moment. Uh, but other times, there's, there's always an abeyance of the intensity, and it's just noticing when the intensity kind of like starts to come down a little bit, then that's an opportunity to, instead of staying inside the pattern of rumination on what was challenging, to decide to shift your attention to pay attention to something else. And that's why having a regular practice is so helpful because it's sort of, that's what regular practice does. It says it doesn't matter if you're having a hard time in life or if you're having an easy time in life in that moment, 
your the, the core of a practice is always sitting and learning to be okay with your discomfort, with your uncertainty, with your um, with your happiness, with your excitement, with whatever's going on. You the practice is learning to be okay with that and learning to be okay with that. So with that attitude, that is kind of like the equanimity that opens up the space to begin to explore some of those subtle pleasures. I mean, it's sort of the doorway into those things. So I guess what I would say is try practicing anyway. You might be surprised. Um, and I would, that's number one. Number two, I would say I would normalize it because there's always going to be these intense challenges for everyone at different times. And the, the different ways we're challenged are important and, they're, and they matter. The differences matter. So I'm not trying to say it's all one thing, um, but that this having this idea that you're that that's one of the things that comes through practice is realizing that, oh, my gosh, like everyone's suffering. Everyone's got challenges in their own way. And when you realize that it can really for me, it makes it when I'm in the loop around really worrying about my own personal mental health dysregulations, it makes a big difference to be able to go to tune into the fact that other people have got their own things going on in different ways. So that would be something else I would say. I mean, what about you? What would you say, Dan? I think that was, that was great. And um, it's the fact that there are subtle pleasures available is to point that out is not to, de- to negate that many people have facts in their lives that are, I think we can objectively call horrifyingly difficult or are on the spectrum or headed that way on the spectrum. That doesn't negate it. And in fact, pointing out this, the accessible nature of simple or subtle ple- pleasures yeah. what is the opposite of negating the, that. It is to, in some way, to uh, provide people with a little bit of a refuge. Exactly. But it is a training, you know, it's a training to remember to pay attention to those things. Um, it's very easy for life to kind of like help to lead us to forget that training. We get so caught up in things. So it's just to have a reminder. I mean, that's why mindfulness, the original word mindfulness, sati, uh, people often translate that as remembering, meaning remembering to come back, remembering that you are the, you're the author of how you pay attention and what you pay attention to. And in that moment, you can remember to come back and go, oh, actually, I cannot feed the beast here. I can feed something else. I can pay, deliberately choose to pay attention to something else. And that is, that's huge. Um, Moira asks a question here. Uh, she says of your meditation, that was wonderful. And then she asks, how do I avoid feeling guilty about taking the time to enjoy simple pleasures? I mean, it's not unlike the last question in a way. It's that there's going to be uh, responsibilities there's, or there's challenges in our life. There's stuff that we have to spend time doing. Uh, but that, you know, I think the reframe for me is um, actually if I tap into these simple pleasures, I'm going to be better at doing those things. So it's like I should feel guilty about not doing it. Uh, I should I should feel guilty about not deliberately finding places to sustain myself or resource myself because I know it's going to mean that I have that much less bandwidth somewhere else. So you can kind of turn that around a little bit. But then I would say the other thing is just like, you know, I, as someone who has a lot of guilt, who has I'm a mom who has a lot of guilt, it's like recognizing your tendency towards feeling guilty, kind of going into that, opening to that feeling, doing a, getting a full bath inside your guilt, being like, oh, yeah, bring it on, guilt really like opening to that and make that part of the experience, knowing that's going to be the big wave at first. And then, of course, what happens is that initial wave will pass and then there'll be more space to begin to notice some of those subtle pieces. Well said. Um, Stick around, Jeff. I just want to do one item of business and then we'll close this out. Uh, Yesterday, I made a little bit of an error. (laughs) Not a big deal, but uh, it definitely plays into some of my uh, shortcomings which include uh, being overscheduled and rushing. Uh, I was asked by my team to send you guys a note about uh, Facebook, and I did it so quickly that I didn't actually communicate it clearly. So now I'm going to try to do it clearly. Um, We have heard your requests for a Facebook group, and we are working on community engagement. But unfortunately, a 10% happier 
uh, Facebook group is not something we're able to tackle right now. Uh, I might have said something a little bit different yesterday just because I was, again, rushing. Every uh, episode is posted daily in our Facebook page, and we encourage you, uh, who, you who are watching it on YouTube to comment and connect with one another there. Um, and Amy Breckenridge, uh, who is uh, taking your comments in the, in the YouTube uh, comment section, can post a link so that you can find each other in one place. Apologies for the fact that we can't do that Facebook page right now. We'll put it on our list of things to do for the future. And apologies for my having sloppily handled it yesterday. Uh, Jeff, thank you. It's always, um, I do not say this in a perfunctory way. It's always great to see you. Always great to see you, Dan. And our uh, teacher tomorrow will be the mighty uh, Kara Lai. And in the meantime, uh, stay home and stay safe. And we'll see you soon.